With me now to unpack that message from NATO, retired Vice Admiral Mark Norman, the former head of the Canadian Navy, and former Chief of Defence Staff, retired General Tom Lawson. Hello to both of you. Real pleasure to have you on the program tonight. Uh, Vice Admiral Hi. Norman, I'll start with you because you're at NATO. You're, you're in Brussels right now. And I'm wondering what your assessment is of why the head of NATO was as pointed in his comments, I would say, having interviewed him a number of times, the most pointed toward Canada uh, at this juncture. Yeah, so I, I would first of all commend the Secretary General for his uh, strategic patience as it relates to the conversations with Canada about spending. Um, why this is particularly important at this moment in time, uh, as, as he uh, alluded to in the rest of your interview yesterday, uh, the, the the situation with Ukraine in particular is really uh, coming to a head. And uh, I think there's a growing concern amongst uh, many of the key allies with respect to what I would describe as um, the, the depth and breadth of commitment to sustain the level of support that's actually required. And, and so that's kind of part of the backdrop. But there's also, I, I think, uh, a longstanding historical element of this. This has taken decades in the making in terms of underfunding. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's timely, it's appropriate, and um, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm surprised he's been this patient this long, to be honest. The, the difference that I discern, General Lawson, and, and please do let me know if you had a different impression, was sort of, and we played some of it, the uh, degree to which he basically said, you can afford it. You know, laid out the size of Canada's economy, its relative stature, and then underscored what Canada does matters. Why would that be his message now, do you think? Well, I, I think you're right, Vashi. And uh, uh, in, in addition to the urgency uh, that Admiral Lauren was speaking about, and he's feeling after a decade as Secretary General, he's focused on Canada. Canada's not just another member of NATO NATO's 31 members. It's one of the wealthiest. He points that out, but he also points out that there's lots of reason uh, that Canada would invest in their defense with the longest uh, shorelines uh, in, uh, in the world, uh, let alone NATO. Um, but I, I think there's something else at play here, too. Uh, I think uh, with the threat of uh, perhaps President Trump coming in and having stated uh, previously that uh, he's not interested in a NATO that doesn't carry their own bags. Uh, he wants to make sure that he's hastened all 31 of the uh, NATO members uh, to make sure that uh, any case that Trump might make to pull out as the uh, undisputed leader of, NORA, uh, of NATO uh, is not there uh, when that time comes. Yeah, and, and Fashi, if I could... Uh, go ahead, yep. You can't. No, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to add to General Lawson's comment because I, I think it's really important. There's another. There's another element of this, which is um, an expected standard of behavior. And uh, you know, there's lots of countries who look to Canada for a variety of reasons um, as a standard setter. Um, and uh, you know, the expectation. You know, if if the alliance allows a country like Canada to not do what it has said it would do, first of all, and what everybody else is expected to do, then how does that reflect on the, um, the coherence, the integrity, uh, and, and the cooperation that is foundational to the alliance over the last 75 years? Can I just follow up with you, uh, Vice Admiral, on, on that point and ask you, based on your conversations that you're having at NATO right now, if you feel that this is something our allies care about and that it has affected our reputation. Well, it is, it's definitely something they care about and, and they care about it holistically, as General Lawson said. I mean, you know, the Secretary General has, has an enormous strategic responsibility to bring uh, a sense of cooperation and consensus across 31 nations. And um, so, so that, that matters. And it, it certainly matters in terms of... Um, you know, the, the perception of Canada and the extent to which it is or isn't um, carrying its own weight. Um, you know, uh, NATO is, uh, at its heart, it's a military organization, but it's, a, it's an extremely diplomatic organization. So um, uh, nobody's going to publicly express um, frustration unless the Secretary General gives them the license to do so. And I think that, that that's an extremely important um, 
comment for him to have made. It's not surprising for those of us who pay attention to these things, but it is. Um, I I, th I think what's happening here is it, they're they're calling us out. They're, they're saying, okay, enough is enough. Um, you know, um, it's time to pony up. It's time to give us some specifics. And uh, as it relates to the, the the vastness of the the economic issue here, you know, I have a concern. Uh, not that two percent is the wrong metric. But that, uh, you know, depending on how you do the math, 2% uh, tomorrow would equate to almost doubling the defense budget of Canada, which is impractical, not because it's not the right thing to do, but because, to be quite honest, we don't have the capacity to manage that kind of money. I mean, we, we, we can't deliver the defense budget that we're supposed to be delivering today, let alone uh, doubling it overnight. And I think, it, you know, to some degree, until we fix some very significant structural issues that have been plaguing the institution for decades, um, you know, I wouldn't advise any government to uh, irresponsibly just start throwing money at a problem which is much deeper than just right. the, the fiscal aspect of it. Well, General Lawson, uh, just jumping off that point, to be fair to the, the federal government, the Defense Minister Bill Blair was on my program last week and essentially, you know, saying we are committed to 2 percent, but there's a lot of stuff we need to fix in the interim, so, sort of uh, in, in reference to some of the issues that Vice Admiral Norman just laid out. The, the fiscal implications are also large, right? Like, if we are talking about doing this over the next four years, that's adding anywhere from 10 to 15 billion dollars to the size of the deficit, uh, which certainly is unpopular with a large constituency of Canadians. And the government is now promising to exercise fiscal restraint. How would you address those issues? Are there ways to spend this kind of money for return, you know, return on investment that will translate to a domestic audience as well? I really believe so, Vashi. Um, you know the current chief of defense said uh, the history of Canada's military is one of unpreparedness. And the reason for that is because Canada's largely seen themselves uh, as able to take a defense discount. Uh, you know, we've got three oceans and a friendly neighbor to the south. Um, so, you know, there, there are times, however, when that has risen to nearly 10 and 15 percent, and that's during the world wars. Um, however, uh, this $15 billion that we talk about can be invested. Soltenberg's not telling Canada where. It can be invested in Canadian requirements, Canadian infrastructure. Bring our bases, our wings, our piers, uh, naval bases up to where they should be. Uh, buy all the spare parts for our current fleets to make sure they're ready to drive and sail and fly. Uh, uh, and uh, invest deeply in young Canadians making these great careers uh, and well-paid careers. And that's going to take, you know, a third to a half of all of this, uh, this increase. And then the rest of it can go very well towards uh, beefing up NORAD, uh, whose sensors haven't been touched in 30-some years, uh, and working on new capabilities that Canada has long said we need, cyber defense, space communications, uh, and, and things like that, that, uh, that haven't even made it onto the list of to-do yet. Let me just quickly follow up with you, General Lawson, and ask, if there, you know, if there are issues around political will, again, informed by some legitimate reasons, particularly around the fiscal implications, but also just a lack of will that's being exercised by successive governments. Like, what would you say to a government asking, should we do this? Yeah, well, there's no doubt about it that it would take a leader who decides that defense is important enough to make it a major plank. Uh, and if they do that, they lead Canadians. Largely, I think the Canadian population is not hostile to defense. It's quite supportive of defense and probably more aware of threats around the world than they ever have been in recent memory. Uh, but they aren't going to put uh, military ahead of uh, housing and, uh, and food and, and health care and all kinds of other things, education and things like that, unless a leader comes out and explains how all of those other things, the safety of all of those other things, depends on a safe world around us. And Canada's investment in defense, much of which can go into Canada, will be supporting that security that's required. I've just got 30 seconds left. Last word to you, Vice Admiral Norman. Just on that same point, right? The, right. Do, do you anticipate that that would resonate with with Canadians at this moment in time, given especially the heightened l lack of security around the world? Yeah, I would agree with General Loss. I don't think Canadians are fundamentally against it. I just think there's a whole bunch of other priorities that they, they are all dealing with on a daily basis. Uh, my, my concern about all of this is that I don't believe the security of the nation and the security of the system 
that uh, our economy and our way of life depend on should be an issue of popular opinion. Um, I think that this rises above um, the, 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 the vagaries of public opinion and popular opinion, and this goes right to um, strategic responsibilities um, of governments um, of all stripes um, as it relates to the security uh, of the nation and the security of the entire global system that our, our, our way of life depends on. And okay. that, that, that should not be an issue that um, Canadians uh, uh, should be, A, should have to worry about, and B, that their opinions, um, although they're, they're important, um, it, it's, above, it, it's above that level of politics. Okay, on that note, I'm going to leave our discussion. I appreciate both of you making the time for the analysis this evening. Uh, retired Vice Admiral Mark Norman and retired General Tom Lawson. Thank you. Thanks, Fashion.